All right, Cody. Everybody say hi. Come on. Say hi. Cody's back. All right. We're going to start block sanding this roof down while I finish some other stuff and put Cody to work. He's wanting to, wanting to help me out. So, uh, so we're going to put some guide coat on this. And, and all that is, is is cheap black paint, you know. Bondo in it. You know, now there might be super slight hail damage that I, don't, I haven't seen. Okay. Okay. So grab me that yellow piece of t uh, roll of tape right there. No, right there. No. Right, right, right there. There you go. So what we're going to do, we're going to go straight with the 150. And the whole goal is here is is to get rid of the black paint. Okay. Okay. Um, because if there's pits, if there's low spots and all that stuff, um, see that dries pretty quick. And it, here's what I want you to do. Two hands, big blocks for big flat areas, small blocks for little areas like this. Okay? And you can kind of, you know, it's a nice flat area. All right, and what we want to try to do, now you can see, see how it's nice and gray. Um, we want to try not to go through the primer. Okay. If you go through the primer, it's totally okay, because we'll spot prime it or whatever. Put a piece of tape on it, okay? If, and, and you don't want to go like this. No. Unless you're doing a small spot like that with a small block, hold it sideways. Pick out a section to start with. Okay, and, and, and you notice what I'm doing is going straight across that line. Yep. Okay. Light pressure, don't push real hard because you don't want to gouge into this corner. Mm -hmm. And if we don't catch it, you'll see it when we paint it. Okay. And, and same thing, I'm going around with this. Let's see, there's a line here. Yeah. So I'm going to just go just like that. And what I don't want to do is push real hard on that corner, it'll burn through the primer. Like I say, it's going to happen, you know, if, you know, like this little, see you got two angles right there. Mm -hmm. So, you just go nice and slow. Lightly on that corner. Okay, you're going to take your brush, and you see it's starting to come out, but we've got to keep going until that black paint's gone, and hopefully before we run out of primer and run through the metal, but it's okay. Keep on. 
and let it go around with the body. You know, just like that. You want to try to do two hands as much as you can. Now I'm talking so I don't have a dust mask. Cody's putting his dust mask on because he's smarter than me. So. Alright. See that there? I see it. It's getting there, but those are all low spots. I'm going to keep going until the black paint's gone. So it's all, you know. We'll move the light over here if you need to so you see better. Um, if you need to, cut it. Remember I was telling you about how these doors will bump together? Yeah. Open the front door first, open the back door. This one's a little stiff. And you can stand right there, okay, to reach over and be able to get to it. All right? So Cody's going to do that. While I fix this little situation here. My little bracket that I made was really nice, but it was too long. So now the fender sticks out and I have no adjustment. So I gotta cut it off and re-weld her back on. Probably get Cody doing a little bit of welding on that too. Okay? Okay. Alright, get to work. <laughs> Glad to see you, buddy. Glad to see you. Well, Cody slept in today and he didn't do too much. Now he's going to go home. Hopefully it's not a habit. Anyway, he worked pretty hard yesterday. Got the roof all blocked out. Um, I'm pretty sure that the roof will just need some spot primed. And it, and it, it really, other than, you know, a couple places like here is a low spot. Um, you know, it's really, it's really a uh, pretty decent shape. <clears throat> Spent a lot of time on this rocker or uh, quarter panel. Of course, you can see the the low spots, the high spot, and the low spot. And of course, there was a crease right. I believe it was down here that I fixed. So, you know, it's going to take. This is this is all going to need reprimed. I'm, I'm going to cut it down some more and spend some more time, you know, working on it. But that's what it's for. There's low spot right there. So with a high spot, you know, so I'll work it all a little bit and reprime it. Cody did a good job. Thanks, Cody. You're welcome. You could smile. No, I'll pass. You pass on smiling? Yep. Okay. Well, whatever. All right, buddy. We'll see you later. All right. Cody's gone. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's got stuff he's got to do. <clears throat> and it's always... Good to have my boys around, then it always sucks when they leave. That's how it is, you know. Anyway. While Cody was block sanding, and he did a really good job, you know. He, he worked really hard at that, got dirty and sneezy and stuff all in his mustache and beard. And I'm pretty proud of him, that's for sure. Anyway, had some holes here cut out some rusty patches and, and welded in some steel. Got Duraglass on top now. There's This is a lot bigger here. So cut me a you know piece of patch panel, the usual story. Of course before I welded that in I had to do a little bit of little bit of welding inside here where it rusted through on the inside. Over here too. Over here too. So it's, it's pretty much a preliminary kind of coating thing and you know th this is all seam sealed anyway. You know I got all the old seam sealer out of here. I've, I've ran my wire brush through here. I've soaked this with more, rust mort two times and I keep wire brushing it, keep cleaning it up. So uh, what I'm going to do is I have, to have some work to do here on the, on the top side. So I'm going to flip it on over. 
and then I'll, I'll soak soak this with rust mort inside here, squirt some up inside here and down through here so it can work its way down into that pinch, you know, that, because that's where water sits and it's got surface rust basically inside of that. <clears throat> of course, when I'm done, I'll, uh, you know, done to the rust treating where I think it's, it's going to be good, then I'm, I'm going to thin out some uh, pour 15. Of course, I'll put it up in through here. And I'll do my best to squirt it in the inside with the deck lid right side up so all that stuff works inside there and it seals it all up. Then of course I'll seam seal it after that. Seam seal it. Seam, seam, seam seal. So anyway, let's get this flipped over and I'll show you what I gotta do on top. Well, let's see if I can get some more done before them pumpkin holler boys get here. It's on a Sunday and they like to, you know, rehearse. I don't know if you call it rehearsing, but we we sit around and bullshit a lot and, and just kind of tinker around with music and come up with stuff so that's actually us working on material for a new album hopefully hey fingers crossed huh okay big old caved in dent right here and it's just just right above the the body line here and it just looks really weird I don't know it looks like somebody I don't know, took a screwdriver and just went like that, but you can kind of see see how deep that is. This whole thing is down. They had that filled a bondo. Here's a little bit of one right here. So I've got to get this straightened out. Of course, I have uh, you know a little bit of bondo work on top of my dura glass here. So I'm not I'm not going to bother starting that until I get this straightened out. Then once I start those, I have a high spot somewhere. And as I was uh, DAing down this deck lid, like I'd like to D8 down real good with 80 grit and then use the stripper, it helps the stripper bite into it a little bit. I found it and I kind of dollied it out. Uh, but, you know, I got this old primer here. So what I'm going to do is use this old primer as my guide coat and I'm going to block this whole deck lid off. And I'll do the same thing with the hood to find all my imperfections, of course it'll get blocked and blocked three or four times. But it's real important, like I was telling Cody, that the roof, the hood, and the deck lid are all as perfectly straight as, you know, any imperfections, that's where you're going to see them. Of course, you'll see them down the side, you know, like the top half. The bottom half, you know, most people won't look, but I'm going to do my best to make it as perfect as I can make it too, of course. But you know, you spend extra time doing great big flat panels like this. So let me uh, get some dent pulling going. Maybe I'll show you a little bit of that. All right, doing a little stud, little stud dent pulling. Got this one here down to almost nothing. Uh, this one here is, it's been a little rough. Now what I did, of course, I ground it all down with my uh, 36 disc. If you see these finer scratches here, the finer scratches are 80. And I just used my block and went across here and found that right here is low. And I could kind of feel it. It starts, stops being low right there. So it's, it's like from here to here. So I'm going to run me a, a one or two studs right through here and just help that out just a little bit. But I'm pretty much done with that. You know, I'll skim it, throw some Dura glass on it, cut it down, and then then we'll start doing our body work. It's a Let's see if I can set you up here. You can watch. Sorry.
stick that on there. Might be a tiny bit low. That's okay. Well, I think that's about as good as I'm going to do it. I just barely feel something. I still feel it in there a little bit. What I don't want to do, you know, is, is over pull it. I'd almost rather just have a skim, a little bit of something in there. And I know a lot of guys really, they spend a lot of time pulling dents. And I think it's great. You know, I might even get my get my arm up through there through the the, the trunk latch hole and uh, see if I can't dolly that a little bit but that's gonna be it really that's pretty much it I'm over it get this thing done let's go all right back at it again I know this video is probably gonna go all over the place I had Cody block sanding and doing some stuff like that and then of course while he was doing that I'm working on Got a good cave-in dent right here where it looked like somebody just backed the car right into something. And I'm still a little bit low right through there. You know, I got my metal patches in here filled in. Metal patches in here. A little bit of dent action here. Found a low spot here. Right on the crown. That's where, you know, slam it. It don't shut. Slam it. Slam it. And of course... We had two high spots here, and I've, I've got to finish blocking these out uh, because that, that bondo's still a little high, I feel that. But yeah, just getting her dolled up, hanging out in the garage. Got my heat going over there, got my big hot lights going and getting her warmed up about 25 when I walked out here. Uh, so we'll get back with you, get something done. Oops, battery's dead, I'll be right back. All right, that's better. All right, we see here the other night we got the our deck lid hung up. Look at that. Anyway, I got the deck lid hung up, and the reason I hung it up this way is I wanted to soak some uh, thinned out 415. I think I told you guys that down inside inside this lip right here on the inside lots of surface rust down inside there you know and unless I took the bead loose all the way around the trunk lid and took the two pieces apart and went in there and and you know clean them up and all that but you know I, I wired brushed inside there best I could cleaned it soaked it with uh, uh, rust mort down inside there and of course on the outside you know I used my little wire wheel and cleaned up best I could and wire brushed it about three or four times soaked it three or four times with rust mort cleaned it up best I could and then uh, pour 15 it now let's pour 15 
uh, a lot of this is going to get knocked off. A lot of it's going to get, um, you know, DA down and all that stuff. But, you know, it, it'll be just fine. We'll put some primer right on top of that. Now, the rest of this trunk lid, of course, is supposed to be the color of the car. And I noticed somebody's painted, painted it to match when they did the crappy paint job on the car to start with. So if you look, and I don't know if you'll be able to see, can you see all those sanding scratches and marks? And a lot of that, um, there's places where the paint is cracked underneath this paint. So, you know, I, there's a couple ways to, to go about it. I could strip it chemically. Bad thing about that is, is we have this sound deadening material that's, that's in here that's factory and I want to keep it. I don't want to get it all nasty and covered with paint and soaked with, you know, that's not going to be a good deal. Um, now, I, I, and the other way I could do it, I could uh, grind it down with my, you know, 36 grit or, or a little 50 grit type of thing. And, and I might do that in certain spots. But then when I do that, of course, then I'm having to put primer on it or do body work to it to clean it all up. You know, so what I'm going to do, I think, is for the most part, I'm going to DA this down with 80 grit, down to where I feel comfortable with, with, with the surface that I have, that I don't have loose paint and all this kind of happy crap. Because when I paint this whole car, it's going to get at least one coat, if not two coats, of epoxy primer sealer. And that, that keeps anything from, you know, um, any of my primer getting ate up by the by the reducer that's in the the paint color itself so uh, i'm planning on not to prime this at all i'm going to prime this bottom edge of course and uh you know get it all prepped up for paint but then i'll, I'll seal this whole thing and then paint it and i think it'll be just fine i think that's the, that's what we're going to do you know and if something doesn't work out right well it's just to the underside of the trunk we're not doing a show car here we're doing a cool cruiser car and, and it's all straight white just regular white no pearls no happy crap like that just a regular old bright classic white that way if something does happen something gets wrecked bumped into you know this is going to be a driver car i'm going to drive the crap out of this thing i'm going to get my money's worth and drive the shit out of it so when it gets damaged it's going to be easy to match up easy to fix and patch back up and and, and so I'm, I'm not going to sweat it too bad about all this my mama uh, fix my uh, my stand here of course you see all this foam gets all tore up so I'm gonna have to get that all off of there clean up my floor uh, and and redo redo my stand so it doesn't tear up the the, the, the top side and to get this LDA down get this thing ready for primer clean the floor up too look at that the disaster area Wow nice heater all right <clears throat> well it's a little different than I thought I uh, started DA in this down with uh, 80 grit and the paint came off really easy um, so I'm kind of glad I did it and I end up going down the metal like really quick but what I thought was old paint for the first at least some of the part wasn't old paint that's in the metal you know this little crinkly it looks like you know it looks like old cracked up you know like lead based paint or something but it's not it's actually in the metal um, places like that like that so it's, it's supposed to be that way you know if this was a show car you, you know you, you'd probably maybe glaze these the, the worst spots and sand them down then 2k primer it with three coats and and block it all out best you could and and make it look like a show car kind of deal but since this is not I'm, I'm I've got it all down to uh, down to 150 now I went over it again with 150 and of course I did a lot of this stuff by hand and and so all I'm gonna do I'm gonna leave it just like this um, it's gonna be another maybe another month or a little more before I paint this car it's winter time here in Indianapolis you know so the air is really super dry at least for the most part so if this surface rusts or does anything um, I'll, I'll you know before I get sealer on it and I could go ahead and put sealer on it right now but I don't want to do that I don't want to have to go through all this again if you see what I'm saying so uh, when I go to paint 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 I'll put my sealer on it 
Within a half hour, I'll start putting color right on it. It's going to be a done deal. Uh, I may, we'll see if I got um, a seam sealer. I want to re-seam seal that whole edge inside there. But it's good. I'm not even going to put primer on this side. You know, not, not my 2K. I'm going to stop my 2K primer right inside the lip. And I'm going to do 2K primer all the way on the lip where it folds over. And I'm going to mask off right there. That's what I'm going to do. You guys would probably do it maybe somehow different. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting over this stuff. We've got to get this thing done. I want to show you guys a trick, and I don't know if I uh, showed you or not before. These are little styrofoam blocks. You can just get them from wherever. I usually get them from work. They're laying around from packaging and all that stuff, and they're soft. You know, so I can put you can put your 150, your 80, or even on your 40 when you're doing, uh, you know, little places like inside here, you know, uh, uh, these little places like here. You can just really, I mean, you can really, it, it just kind of conforms and goes in there with it, especially with a piece of uh, 150. It just, it's softer, you know, and it goes right in the, in the crevices and you don't wear your fingers out. Of course, a lot of this you just have to do with your fingers, this kind of stuff right here. You just have to do with your fingers. There's no, you know, but you can take any kind of piece of foam, you know, and, and, and cut it so it's at its angle. And that's, that's how I did inside here. They put me a piece of 80 grit on there and just worked it inside there until I got all the glossiness gone from that poor 15. Got it all cut down. Anything loose, it came off, you know. So let me roll this thing over. But I just want to show you guys that. And I, I got that idea primarily really from my friend Pete you know he had a, a you know so I started grabbing that kind of stuff so I have styrofoam all over the place just for just for that um, and it's great to set my body panels on on a piece of styrofoam just like this hood so it doesn't get tore up so that old piece of styrofoam in there and that stuff's free you know so where, wherever your workplace is and you know I don't you know if you if you know somebody who works at a place that there's lots of styrofoam and cardboard have them to get it for you if you're doing a project like this it just comes in handy you can always throw it away it's free all right let me get this thing flipped over uh, i want to get it masked off and and get it wiped down we're going to get this son of a bitch in primer and in this video all right well got her masked off masked off right to where i want to stop my primer i uh did just a little bit of pour 15 up under that lip where all that surface rust was um, just on that lip uh, and and I wiped the, all the excess down with uh, with a rag that way it, it you know and I'm giving it a little bit of time to set up I've already wiped it down with some uh, uh, prep all it's not really wax and grease remover I think it's more of an alcohol based kind of thing and just a basic your basic cleaner you know um, we don't want uh, grease and wax remover to get soaked into our, our, our Bondo there. And this stuff evaporates really quick, just like alcohol, so I think it's fine. We don't want to use that wax and grease remover until it's all super primered and right before we paint and it's all sealed up, you know. So, got the garage warming up just a little bit. Get the temperature up in here. It's uh, I don't know, 30 degrees outside, I'm guessing. And it, and it feels like it's about 60 in here, 55 or 60. I'm in a t-shirt, you know, so I'm pretty comfortable. I just wanna uh, get the temperature up in here while this stuff's drying. Go pee, uh, got my paint, got my hardener measured out, got my cup ready to go. Um, gonna gonna get ready to mix this stuff up and I, and I want this off while I'm painting. I don't, I'm, I'm not real sure about basically an open flame, uh, you know, and painting. So I want to get the temperature up in here so it lasts long enough for this stuff to, to set up and, and, and uh, the garage to air out. So, all right, maybe I'll uh, hook you guys up and we'll get a little priming action in this video. Be right back. I got to use the bathroom.
Yeah, my camera ran out of memory. I'm trying to do HD, and uh, of course, you know, you can't hold as much time on it. So hopefully, you caught a little bit of me doing some prime work. Uh, let's check it out. Still a little fumey in here, so I, I uh, don't want to stay out here real long. Uh, turned out pretty decent. A little bit, a little bit of a rough texture, and, and I believe, like I've had the problem before, is water. I got the little cheesy water separator there, and I'm gonna tell you what, it is cheesy. I'm gonna have to spend some before I start, you know, using color and and clear coat. I'm gonna have to upgrade that and kind of figure out that problem. I use these things, you know, and if you prime a door, then maybe a fender then throw these away because they'll, they will catch a lot of water and, and filter but they're, they're disposable you know a couple bucks a piece and this one just went a little bit too long and I got a little bit of water in it now the water is gone but it leaves a little kind of a rough surface you know and it's slicking out it's starting to slick out a little bit not too bad not too bad I don't think they all block out and it's gonna get reprimed anyway I already see some imperfections my uh, kind of hard to see the factory area here and coming over to here where I did all my metal work of course is rounded off just a little bit and of course down the other ends the same way you know even though I guide coated that and blocked it out still you know it's a part by part by part step by step process and it's just how it is everything I've done so far in this car ends up ends up having some imperfections in it and you just got to go back and fix it get over it and go back and fix it so like I was saying the underside will get uh, sealed uh, just like the rest of it before it gets painted and if I get it you know it's, it's a lot of it bare metal I think we'll be fine for about another month or so if I get a little surface rust going on I already know how to do it I already know how to take care of it so I'm, I'm gonna I'm done with this trunk lid for right now done with it this is gonna sit uh, overnight get everything set up really good tomorrow I'll come back and I'll start stripping that hood we got some work to do on that and I showed you guys earlier in the video or the last video I don't remember anyway I'm gonna get out of here I'm gonna mix this video up and get it posted we got one more to do on the hood and then we'll we'll move on I'm pretty wore out but I appreciate you guys watching, sharing when you can share. Uh, it, you know, if it's uh, if it's any good to you, give me a thumbs up, comment down and below there. You know, blow me some shit. That's totally cool. I'm uh, I'm I'm good with trying to you know. I'll explain myself. And like I told uh, another Facebook friend of mine who started his own project, I told him I said. The one thing I found out is there's a million ways to do the same thing and the best way to do it is what's good for you. You do the best you can with what you got, with the abilities you got, and, and, and that's a part of it. You know, there, we, can, we, can go, we can go and talk about that for hours and hours, but you know, it is what it is. I'm doing, I'm doing the best I can with what I got and I'm having a great time doing it. I'm learning a lot. The next car that I get hopefully is a 55 or a 57 Chevy and it's going to be a major major deal it's going to be you know it'll be it'll be the show car quality kind of stuff but it's not going to be done in this garage it's not going to be done with that welder with that compressor you know with with this air file you know all that stuff's going to get upgraded slowly in time and that's how that's how you learn that's how you upgrade that's how things get better for you so but anyway thanks for watching everybody i'm gonna get out of here and get in the house and sell my butt it's saturday it's almost three o'clock and i might cut it off just a little bit early no reason not to see you guys